Hello and welcome to ESC Norway, Christian Ingebrigtsen. Welcome. Thank you very much. In 2020, you won as a composer for Ulrike and you have written many songs for MGP in the past. But um, you have also been a part of the contest with A1 back in 2010. How does it feel to be back in MGP again as an artist this year? Well, it's a lot scarier, I got to tell you. It's better to, in many ways, to be the composer or producer back sort of in, in the, you know, behind the scenes because uh, the nerves don't get you as much. I mean, if it's it's fun if you win, but if you don't, yeah, it's okay. You know, it doesn't really matter. But when you're the artist, it really, um, yeah, it's really scary. Uh, and not so much, obviously, the, the performance side, because I've been performing at, at big um, stages before and throughout my tw over 20 years with A1, you know, we've done big uh, concerts and, and TV shows, but it's everything around it. It's all the net trolls, all these, uh, you know, reviewers and people with all their opinions that scares me the most. And uh, I'm, a, you know, I'm an emotional guy. That's how I write all these songs. And uh, but unfortunately, that also brings an element of um, what should I say? Um, yeah, nerves when it comes to, yeah. you know, how, how people treat your the comment comment sections <laughs> on, yeah. on social media, etc. But do you try to shelter yourself from all this uh, commentary and the net trolls, as you say? Or I do. I do. I try not to read as much. So if you've written a message on social media, uh, please forgive me if I haven't replied yet. I'm. I'm. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty slow as it is. But I. I, uh, I have people uh, in the management and uh, a team around me helping me out with uh, the social media stuff, so that I don't have to see everything. Um, which is also why I haven't really read all the reviews and. I haven't read uh, even the bookies, uh, you know, favorites or not favorite, because I don't want that to affect my performance of the song and uh, or my feeling going into it. Because I I just want to, you know, perform my song the way I, uh, you know, I envisioned it and heard it in my head when I wrote it, and uh, I want it to be as emotional and powerful as it, as it was then, because I, I I really did feel that we stumbled across a really special melody and special lyric that uh, hopefully can connect with you know people like me who are emotional human beings. Yes. And could you tell us a little bit about the story behind the song uh, Wonder of the World? Yeah, the story is, I mean, uh, the, the short version is, uh, the song is about uh, how uh, all the greatest wonders of the world uh, cannot compare to the, to the greatest wonder of them all, which is to love and be loved in return. And it's that easy. I mean, no matter, you know, I've traveled the world and I've seen so many uh, wonderful places. And and and, and the one thing uh, that always you know, sort of um, was in the back of my head was, I wish I could share this moment with someone. I wish I could share this this wonderful experience with that special someone. And 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 that's what happened. You know, uh, last year I got engaged. Uh, and, oh, uh, really? Congratulations! Yeah. Oh, so, uh, thank you. And, uh, and it was my, my fiance who um, actually inspired me. She said, you know, you have all these love songs about love that, that's not, you know, uh, going too well. <laughs> uh, and, and when I thought about it, she's absolutely right. Like most of my, at least my, my, my biggest hits, both with A1 and with, uh, as a solo artist, uh, have been about, you know, love not, it returned or or I messed up or something like that. So I needed a song that's sort of, and it was easy to write that this time around because now I've, I've met someone, you know, obviously that, that special one I'm going to marry. And, uh, uh, and so, and with my, my, I have a songwriter, songwriting partner uh, from, in Nashville. Uh, he's now moved to Europe, actually, just this year, he moved to Berlin, but um, we've been writing for 15 years together and, and we've traveled to all these places we sing about in the song together as songwriters working in the industry. And, uh, and we had that, you know, um, that story together that, you know, no matter what we see and how many amazing places we get to travel to, uh, it's not the same if we can't share it with someone. And then we wrote the song and then we got uh, our good friend Henrik Tala involved as well uh, towards the end and uh, who's an amazing producer and writer who's, who's we might remember uh, the the Kino winning song from from a few years back from Norway um, 
uh, he, he co-wrote that and produced that. So it was great to get sort of him involved as well to, you know, to get the, the Eurovision view on this song. Cause we, we had originally just written it as a song um, for me and my new album. And uh, um, we had to sort of, you know, at, at the, in the production stage as well, think how can we make this into a Eurovision entry? Um, yeah. And I think we've done that. I think it's, it's got that sort of, uh journey it's it's a journey throughout the song and um I'm, we're all i'm really pleased to have those guys with me on the song as well performing in uh, eurovision comes with a set of expectations uh, and um, <coughs> patients about how the show should be uh, pyro and uh, dancers and fires and uh, and uh, all this stuff uh could you say something about how you will perform your song on Saturday? Can we expect that your piano, for example, turns into flames or something? Yeah. Well, uh, well, you, you said it. I'm going to be at the piano like when we wrote it. And uh, I think uh, I've always had the uh, philosophy in, in MGP and Eurovision that I love it when a song is strong enough to, like, if you can perform it, behind the piano or behind a guitar uh, and vocal and and it it moves you in in, in a way uh, alone without the production and all the other stuff around it then you have a great song and then obviously i'm a fan of all the stuff around it as well but <clears throat> to me the greatest eurovision winners have been the songs that are just great songs and to me i want to represent that part of the competition where I just want the song to be in the focus and I want to be at the piano and I want strings there and I want, you know, obviously to be a, a great lighting and, and TV production around it to make it exciting. Um, uh, but it's not a song that sort of wants a lot of pyro or uh, dancers around it because it's a ballad. Uh, so it's going to be in its pure form, me around the piano and strings. And that's pretty much it. So hopefully that's not too boring, but I, th I think the song is exciting enough in itself to, to do the talking. I'm, I was supposed to ask you if you could sing a short snippet of the song, but uh, I heard that you had a little bit issues with your voice. Uh, could you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, I'm a bit nervous. As you can hear, I'm a little bit hoarse. <clears throat> I've, I've been... Um, uh, yesterday I had uh, needles in my acupuncture to try to fix my voice for next weekend so I'm just really hoping that this week I can rest my voice enough to get my voice back because it needs to be 100% for this song because it really uses my range uh, you know I'm a baritone and uh, I've been forced into sort of tenor uh, <clears throat> uh, parts with, with you know, three other tenors in, in, in A1 for 20 years so I you know I'm, I'm pushing myself as, as far as I can in that end. Uh, and that, when the voice is not 100%, that gives you trouble. So I'm going to try to rest my voice as much as I can until um, this weekend. And then uh, then we'll see. I'll give it. But I'll, I'll you know, I've, I've just recorded also, uh, before I started having issues, I <clears throat> recorded some snippets here and there that I will release once I get to edit it uh, on uh, social media platforms, stuff like that. So, so there will be, uh, and obviously... Uh, there's plenty of time between Saturday and the final on the 19th of February. So yeah, it's possible to follow you on TikTok. It's possible yes. to follow you on TikTok now. <laughs> yeah, tell me about I, it. I thought I really thought that train had uh, that boat had sailed. Uh, I, I uh, the train had sailed. That's a Norwegian expression. There's so many Norwegian expressions that when you directly translate it into English, yeah. it doesn't make any sense. Uh, but yes. Um, I thought TikTok, I was too old for that. I, you know, I, I didn't want to, oh, another social media platform I have to keep up with. But NRK, uh, the Norwegian Broadcasting Network, has uh, sort of, you know, pushed gently all the artists this year to be a part of it. And so I started A1 Christian is the is the name of the account. Uh, so it's easy to, to remember. Uh, and uh, I've, I've, I'm really loving it. I think it's so much fun. I got to tell you. Um, it's absolutely amazing. What a platform. I'm there more than the other platforms now. So I've been trying to, to and I've, I've made some content that I'm going to release for the next few weeks. And I'm, I'm really excited about it. I've got some great ideas because you get great ideas from watching all the other accounts. There's so many funny accounts there. I can, I can, I can sit there for hours. <laughs> it's really a great platform. If you're not there already, it's not too late. It's actually a lot of fun. Get on it.
Okay. Uh, despite from these TikTok uh, challenges for you, uh, what are you looking forward to about this uh, participation in MGP on Saturday? I think the the, the best part of of uh, Eurovision Song Contest as a competition uh, is that it's a it's a wonderful platform for all these different genres and artists uh, from all kinds of styles and backgrounds to do what they do best, perform their music from their genre. And uh, I just love that whole, the atmosphere behind, you know, the scenes where everyone's just rooting for each other. And it's, a, it, everyone's, there's a lot of love. Uh, you know, obviously it's a competition and people want to win, but um, I, I think it's such a great atmosphere with all the artists and you really want to root for all the others as well. You just don't want it to end. It's so much fun to be a part of it. I wish there was as much love in the comments section around there. I see yeah. a lot of, trolls out there writing horrible things like why would you do that why would you go on to someone who spent a year preparing this and they pour their hearts into something they love okay so you don't love it my mom taught me growing up if you don't have anything nice to say about people just don't say it just don't say anything um but of course that's part of what makes it exciting as well that people have opinions but i, I gotta say um i prefer it when people have constructive and and and, and, and uh, loving comments to people because all these artists deserve it because they really yes they put their hearts out uh you know in a composite competition like this yeah and and maybe this brings me out uh, to our last question, and that is, do you have any messages for the Eurovision fans out there? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think uh, this is the biggest party of the year. I love it so much. It's been a dream of mine since I was a kid to represent Norway in this songwriting competition. Um, and now as an artist, I'm even more excited and, and you know, hopefully I'll get the chance uh, to represent Norway this year. If I don't, hey, I've been able to, to you know, showcase my new single, my new song to a whole bunch of people that wouldn't normally listen to it. So I just hope that you can um, take a listen to the song and hopefully it can inspire uh, love stories around uh, homes throughout Europe as well as Norway. Let's hope that. And thank you for taking your time to talk with us and the best of luck on Saturday, Christian. Thank you so much for having me.